and welcome back. As mortgage rates increased last month, historically low levels of existing houses was not enough to bolster sales for home builders this August. Also, unsold builder inventory has been increasing, rising to the highest levels since February this year. This is based on a brand new report from the US Census Bureau. And in today's video, I'm gonna share all the details. Also, a lot of research went into making this video. So if you guys appreciate that, um, then also consider subscribing as well if you haven't done so already, because I post frequent housing market updates. Also, check out that link below, which is realestateteamfinder.com if you would like a real estate agent referral. So with that said, I have a lot to share in today's video and let's begin. So here's the actual report from the US Census Bureau just announced this morning, which is um, Tuesday, September 26, almost October, I can't believe that. Uh, they actually go over um, new single family houses, um, the sales numbers and inventory levels uh, this August here. And, and, the, and this again is from the uh, Census Bureau as well as from HUD as well. So uh, a friendly reminder in today's video, I'm only talking about, actually this report here only talks about new single family houses, um, houses that are not yet started, which are dirt lots in which the builder is gonna start building a house and also houses under construction and also completed houses as well. I mentioned that because the Census Bureau defines a sale as a deposit taken by the home buyer or a sales agreement signed between a buyer and a home builder. So the stats I'm sharing regarding sales in today's video is acting more like a pending home sale, a measure of a contract being signed between builders and buyers. Having said that, let's have a look at the number of houses that sold uh, in the United States here and also look at inventory levels as well. And these numbers, by the way, for house that sold are in thousands of units and also they're seasonally adjusted as well and also annualized here. So at 675,000, that was the current sales pace or the sales pace in August, uh, which is uh, down by 8.7% compared to July, uh, but still up by 5.8% from a year ago. So contracts being signed between builders and home buyers for single family houses decreased by nearly 9% compared to the previous month. What's interesting about this is this right here. Here is average uh, monthly rates according to Freddie Mac on our good Uncle Fred's website. So in July, rates increased from 6.7% uh, on average for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage to 6.84% uh, in July. But then in August, it increased to 7.07% on average for the entire month of August. So it makes sense that we saw a decrease in sales down by nearly 9% because rates have increased for the past several months now. And again, keep in mind these figures for August are based on contracts being signed. So that really is a, a measure of demand based on um, interest rates for the month of August, of course. There's a few things I wanna to touch on regarding sales numbers uh, in the US here because at 675,000, that was a miss. The street was forecasting 700,000 this August. Also, this is the slowest pace since March this year as well. At 675,000, the lowest levels since March, at that time there was 640,000. So as a note right there, elevated rates and challenging affordability conditions for home buyers pushed down sales for the month of August here. The decrease in sales could imply that rate buy downs are no longer as effective. So rate buy downs by home builders was uh, very, very common in the last half of 2022. Then they started to decrease incentives in the first half this year. Now, uh, again, because rates have increased to about 7.5%, rate buy downs may not be as effective as they once were when rates were hovering around 6 to 6.5%. So therefore, this could imply that uh, all these incentives that builders are uh, giving to home buyers are not really increasing sales anymore uh, because uh, despite all this, it decreased by 8.7% from the previous month. Something to keep in mind though, is that the sales numbers varied quite a bit depending on the region here. So the Census Bureau looks at the Northeast, the Midwest, the South, and the West. So compared to uh, one month ago, uh, the only uh, region that saw a gain in home sales was actually in the Northeast, increasing by 6.7%. Whereas the Midwest uh, fell by 17.2%, and also we saw a decrease uh, in the South and also in the West as well. 
In contrast though, on a year over year basis, again, overall, we're up by 5.8%. The only region that experienced a decrease was actually the South falling by 9.2%. Whereas the West increased by 44.1%. Uh, something to keep in mind is that at this time last year, back in August of 2022, our housing market was uh, slowing down big time because rates increased from three to about 7% in less than a year. And that's why home sales really tanked uh, for existing houses and also new home construction at this time last year. So it makes sense that we're actually still up compared to one year ago on a nationwide basis here. Let's also have a look at the number of home sales, uh, again, on a seasonally adjusted analyzed basis over the past uh, five years. So the current sales pace right now at 675,000 is obviously uh, well below what we saw back in 2020 and 2021. Uh, but it's roughly on par with pre-pandemic levels. So for example, back in January uh, 2020, it was at 685,000, roughly on par with the current sales pace right now. However, of course, will that change given the fact that average rates uh, today are still around 7.5%, uh, very, very close to a 23-year high regarding average rates today. All right, let's have a look at um, house inventory of uh, brand new home construction. Again, these are houses that are dirt lots in which the builder is trying to get a deposit and they'll start building houses, or it's houses under construction or completed houses as well. So a wide variety of homes actually for sale here. So for the uh, month of August, uh, by the way, this is not annualized, but it is seasonally adjusted. 436,000 single family houses for sale uh, this August. And that, by the way, is the highest amount since February this year. And also it has been increasing ever since June. At 436,000, the highest levels since February, when at that time there was 437,000. It is also is fairly flat compared to last month, only an increase of 1.2%, uh, but it's still down from a year ago, down by 5.2%. When looking at our good Uncle Fred here, uh, over the past 12 months here, uh, as you can see here, inventory levels hasn't been rising for about three months in a row now, uh, but we're still well below uh, what we had back in August of 2022 at 460,000. Um, also compared to pre-COVID levels, you can see how, um, how high uh, we have uh, for the amount of houses for sale for new home construction. Night and day difference compared to existing houses because um, the number of houses for sale of existing houses is still down by about 45% compared to 2019 at this time, whereas new home construction is up greatly. So right now, 436,000 looking at, uh, let's just look at uh, September uh, 2019, there was only uh, 323,000. So we have far more uh, new home construction for sale compared to pre-COVID levels. Um, also, when looking at, let's just look at the past uh, 20 years or so here. So going back to the year of 2000, uh, when looking at pre-COVID levels at 436,000, this is actually the highest levels since May of 2008. At that time, there was 451,000. So overall, even though the levels has been decreasing ever since really late uh, 2022, except for the past a few months here, when looking at the past 20 years or so, we're still at very, very high levels. Now, this is also true when looking at the month supply for new home construction, because for the month of August, that's at 7.8 months, a fairly uh, significant increase compared to the previous month, uh, but also it's still a down compared to a year ago, uh, because back in August of 2022, the month supply was 8.7 months. Um, uh, I friendly reminder that one year ago, we saw a high level of the number of houses for sale and also uh, the month supply uh, due to all the supply chain bottlenecks that home builders were facing. But on top of that, the housing market was falling greatly at this time last year. Um, also, when looking at the historical levels over the past 10 years, you really can see how, how high these levels are. So at 7.8 months, this is still uh, well above the all-time record low that was set back in August of 2020 when the month supply was only 3.3 months. Also, when looking at pre-pandemic levels, the month supply was in the range of five to around six months. 
And of course, that's well below the current levels right now at 7.8 months. So big picture here, the month supply at 7.8 months is still high uh, going by historical standards because historically speaking, we see the month supply in the range of five to about six months. And by the way, just for comparison's sake, the all-time record highs was at 12 months for a housing supply set back in January of 2009. Going back to the uh, Census Bureau's report here, uh, let's talk about home prices. So the median sold price this August was $430,300, virtually flat compared to January at $432,000. Also compared to one year ago at $440,000, this means the median sold price of a brand new single family house uh, decreased by about 2%. All right, let's change gears uh, slightly here and talk about the number of houses that sold this August by stage of construction and also the number of houses for sale by stage of construction as well. Some very big changes, especially regarding completed houses for sale. I have a very in-depth analysis regarding uh, historical trends. Uh, I spent a lot of time researching this. Anyways, let's have a look at the number of houses that sold. Again, uh, the pace this August at 675,000, uh, looking at not yet started, under construction, and also completed houses as well. Uh, what I'm more focused on is completed houses that were sold here because I noticed this. So for the month of August, the pace uh, for completed houses was 264,000. That's the lowest level since February this year. And also it's much higher compared to one year ago though. One year ago, it was at 249,000. So I found this to be interesting because they're seeing a fewer um, contracts being signed for completed houses. Now here is where it really gets interesting in my personal opinion. So looking at the number of houses that are for sale that are completed houses, in other words, they have completed all the construction of building the house, they're ready for a home buyer to buy the house and move in. And this is a uh, metric here I've been following very, very closely because if the number of completed houses that are still for sale starts skyrocketing, that'd be a recipe for disaster for home builders. So here's the uh, current trends we're seeing right now. Uh, the number of completed houses technically for sale was 76,000 versus 436,000 overall, which includes not yet started dirt lots, under construction and also completed houses as well. So based on my research, going back to data from the uh, Census Bureau, going back to the 1970s here, at 76,000 completed houses for sale, it has been rising, but it still only represents 17% of the total number of homes for sale. That's not yet started, um, houses under construction and also completed houses. So completed houses only represent 17% of all single family houses technically for sale. And also based on my analysis, the historical average going back to 1999 is 26% versus 17% this August. And on top of that, right before the onset of COVID, uh, the percentage was around 23%. So big picture here, uh, we're still at very low levels, but it has been increasing. Uh, so for example, the number of completed houses for sale was only in the range of eight to 10% of the total number of houses for sale uh, for much of 2020 and 2021, whereas right now it's at 17%. Um, also, just for comparison's sake, there was approximately 170,000 to 190,000 completed houses for sale back in 07 and 08. Uh, that represented about 40 to 45% of the total number of houses for sale. Also for comparison's sake as well, the all-time record low was set back in January of 2022 uh, when we had 31,000 completed houses for sale. Now it's at 76,000, uh, which by the way is the highest levels since April of 2020. So big picture here, this is a very, very important metric that I'm personally following and also reporting to you guys as well uh, because this number continues to increase of course, that could be a recipe for disaster for home builders. Uh, but again, at 17%, uh, the historical averages going back to 1999 is only at 26%. So we're still at um, historically low levels, but it has been increasing uh, over the past several months though. 
so much so that we're at the um, highest numbers that we've seen since April of 2020. I would love to hear from you guys though, because uh, that right there is my biggest takeaway regarding completed houses uh, increasing, uh, but also due to the fact that um, home sales overall um, actually decreased by nearly 9% uh, right there uh, compared to uh, July, which implies that all these rate buy downs and um, builder incentives that home builders are offering home buyers is not enough or was not enough to increase sales for August. And on top of that, rates have increased ever since August as well. So the average rate, let me actually look at that. So the average rate for August uh, was again, 7.07%. Uh, this is according to Freddie Mac. And the average 30 year fixed rate as of September so far increase again, now it's at 7.16%. And also the daily rate today, which again is uh, September 26, is at 7.5%, nearly a 23 year high. That implies, or I would imagine, we're gonna see a decrease of new home sales in September once the uh, Census Bureau announces that in about a month. And of course, I'll make a video on that and report the latest data from you guys as well. But what's your biggest takeaway? I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, be sure to check out that link below if you guys want a real estate agent referral or a mortgage advisor as well. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I appreciate you and we'll see you on the next video.